It's 7.07, I'm Daedalus Howell, and it's a great pleasure to have Jake Ward. You know his name because Jake Ward Presents is on pretty much everything happening worth a damn currently uh, in the local arts space uh, in performances. Jake is a promoter, a producer, an impresario of many colors, including now blue. Uh, mm, <laughs> this is nice. <laughs> I worked on that. Get really. that out of the way. No, yeah. no, it's just, it's just it's marvelous, man. I mean, yeah, last time I saw you, you had a whole different look on. So, I know. Yeah. Well, Top Shelf Barber in South A neighborhood changed my life. Little plug there. Yeah, good, yeah. good. Yeah, you could. I'm glad. Yeah, you look good. Thanks. So, dude, uh, walk me through the whole process of being, being an independent, an independent promoter in Sonoma County right now because it's it's changed a lot over the last decade i think and you've seen a lot of it from the beginning sure at least um, of the last decade so yeah i mean being an independent promoter i think is hard anywhere but you know we're in sonoma county so every neighborhood every you know you have your unique like local culture like what kind of shows do people go see what do they want you yeah. know and then like how much do people pay to go out what nights of the week they go out so you're it's always like a weird like you know, it's like not a per perfect science to figuring out like how right. to make successful shows. It sounds more like an art in the end that you have to sort of deduce, but you know, you know the neighborhoods, mm -hmm. right? You well, I'm born and raised in Santa Rosa, yeah. so I've been here a while, but um, yeah, like um, my main thing these days is variety shows. So, right. you know, that one sort of came out of the fact that, you know, there are no other variety shows in the county really, or even in right. the North Bay that are like a regular, you know, thing. And yours so. is a monthly event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what is what is yeah. North Bay Cabaret? Wait, is, this is your conception, or so North Bay Cabaret started as basically you know a one-off idea, like let's try doing a variety show in Santa Rosa, see how it goes. Um, so you know, I reached out to what I could determine to be like the local burlesque scene, mm -hmm. which we have Cabaret de Caliente, and I reached out to Eva De Luscious, and she's a Sonoma County. Uh, she's in Portland now, but she was a Sonoma County-based burlesque performer and reached out to Josh Windmiller right, who course, he recently yeah. had and so he yeah. played music and then reached out to like the local poets and comedians and just sort of put together this little review that like mainly focuses on local artists from like each sort of discipline. That's awesome. Yeah. How do you know everyone? Is it just having come up in the scene? Um, really it's no like because honestly like uh, growing up too I was like homeschooled and raised like in a Christian Republican household so you had like, no friends on a farm I, no that's like that's that's <laughs> that's the, no that's that's pretty accurate okay, actually <laughs> in terms of like I had friends yeah. but um, but they were all kind of within that community that I was raised in which was like extremely hyper conservative like insulated environment I had right? no idea I mean I know you a little bit but I didn't realize you had that experience yeah wow. no that's where I came from so so yeah like coming into like the scene as it were in yeah. Sonoma County it's like no I didn't know anyone it was like always a matter of just like reaching out to people like cold calling people and being like hey I have this idea for a show and then you know gradually getting to know people in town but and they're like hey man this homeschool Christian Republican guy is on the yeah. front should we do this I don't gig? lead with that that being my history yeah yeah um yeah, so no, it was it was very much just like seeing who would say yes and, you know, developing those relationships over time. And um, and the first show we did um, was successful. I mean, like we had 150 people come to a, like a yeah. small bar in Roseland for um, a show that was an unestablished brand. You know, mm -hmm. no one, you know, at that point, like my like me putting my name on a flyer meant nothing because I didn't have like a body of work you know, right. behind that. But you did start putting your name on the flyer. I did. I Who did. told you to do that? Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I, I had some mentors <laughs> through the way. No, that, that of course was uh, a no. great piece of advice that um, someone wise once gave me was to um, <laughs> just put, instead of like coming up with like a brand, just like put myself forward as like, I'm the Be presenter. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Brand, yeah. And, yeah, and and by default the host too, and so you have a presence yeah. in the arts arts community. So I yeah. MC the events, I book them, I promote them, um, I do a lot of like the organizational side. So you know, there's a lot of yeah, a lot of moving parts, a lot of roles. But artists yeah. trust you. That's the thing. You know, artists seem to trust Jake Ward. They wouldn't trust some made up thing on a business card. They trust you that they know you're going to deliver a certain caliber of access, performance, and audience. Right. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm always pretty like realistic. I mean, like, like the main monthly show we do, it's yeah. in the outdoor beer garden of a whiskey bar in the Roseland neighborhood. Right. Right. So I'm always like, look, this is what it is. We <laughs> bring our own lights, our own PA. We build a green room out of like a pop-up tent. Like the entire thing is like a ramshackle, like crazy pop-up experience. 
and it's me and my friends putting it all together. We're right. not like a professional production company or no vetted like thing. It's like very like organic little group of people that kind of came around the event and put it together each time. But it's the spirit of the thing. I think yeah, I think. Really they, well, there's also like there's like if you're if you're in Sonoma County and you're a burlesque performer, you're usually traveling to San Francisco or Oakland, et cetera, mm -hmm. to get gigs. So I think all of the local performers, of which we have many, um, don't have like that local outlet. So it just kind of like filled that need, yeah, you know, on a base level. And see, and are you competing with San Francisco? Do you feel like Santa Rosa has to, like, segregate itself and try to make its own scene and not lose performers and not lose audience to San Francisco? I don't think so. No, I think that um, people want lo people who live here want something local. They want that um, show that you can get in San Francisco, but to not have to drive out for it. Right. So I really think that we, as much as the show has grown and we do get people who come from like kind of here and there to come see it now, which is awesome, it mainly is just catering to local people who otherwise would either stay home or go to an event and be like, well, this isn't really for me because it, you know, it's this is live performance centered, and there's not a lot of uh, events you can go to regularly in Santa Rosa where you're going to see like all live performance, right? You know, and, and regionally specific where they're making jokes and references to the experience of Santa Rosa. Oh yeah, no, yeah, we get super yeah. meta sometimes. So no, that, that's yeah. that's great. There's this yeah. whole sort of ecosystem of local, local, local that's happening. Uh -huh. and we had uh, Terry Garrett from Go Local on recently. Yeah, and he talked about the economic drivers behind that. And uh, we've had Krista Madsen from Creative Sonoma on talking about how the arts are really kind of a pillar of the local economy and stuff like sure. that. Sure. Yeah, but. You guys take it to another degree where you're like, these are local performers performing locally relevant shows for local audiences. Mm -hmm. And I don't think a lot of companies do that. I think they aspire to either draw, draw, in, uh, draw in other audiences or take the show outside of San Francisco. Sure. So, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think our show naturally became more of like, um, like an incubator for local talent where, you know, we have performers who debut, they'll do their first attempt at stand-up comedy or their first mm -hmm. burlesque performance on the stage because there's an outlet for it now. So we're not only, you know, catering to the performers that exist here, but actually kind of inspiring some new ones, which is really awesome. And then, but we do have a lot of performers from the greater Bay Area, and even now we'll get people who are like internationally on tour who like heard about us through like Facebook and like right. they'll stop through and we'll have like, so in the same night you'll see like local, like really raw, like new talent. Yeah. And then you'll see like really polished, like renowned talent in the same night. So I think having that spectrum of like, we're not going to kind of, I mean, it's not like an open mic. Right, here, yeah. But it's also not like trying to be this really exclusive thing where we just like grab all of this out of town talent and like kind of like don't provide that outlet for local artists and for new artists. Yeah, that's you know? much, very necessary and awesome. We're talking with Jake Ward, a local promoter uh, on 7 to 7. We'll be right back. <laughs> back on 707. We're talking to Jake Ward, local impresario. You know him uh, as the man behind North Bay Cabaret and uh, many other events throughout uh, the local experience here and beyond. I know you're working with Rick Bartolini now. Uh, you mentioned that earlier uh, yeah. before we started the segment. Mm -hmm. uh, Rick uh, was last, I mean, as I remember, affiliated with what was the Luther Burbank Center or Wells Fargo Center, I think, for some time. Right. And uh, and now you are doing a kind of, I wouldn't identify it as an apprenticeship, but you're learning under his wing some of the other aspects of this business. Yeah. Right, yeah, so Rick was the, you know, the talent buyer for the Luther Burbank Center for some years, and he, uh, he worked at the Green Music Center for a while too, for about oh, yeah. a year, and then after that went independent. Um, so now he, yeah, he has like a, a list of, you know, Pretty, pretty A-list clients that yeah. he works with independently. So when they come through California, like he'll be the guy to set up that show for them. That's great. Versus uh, a live nation. Versus or, like a live nation yeah. or something more, yeah, more of the corporate established, like the people who buy like an entire tour, you know, he'll just like buy like one or two shows in the region and produce, promote those yeah, those dates great. for them so it's a very like it's a lot more like hands-on care for like those shows with him as an independent versus what you might get you know when, yeah yeah what have you learned like going from the scale of stuff that you do to the scale thing he's he's doing mm -hmm. and how, what a great opportunity for you too to kind of like see a spectrum like that yeah totally no yeah because like one day like i said like i'm like setting up a pop-up tent in like the backyard <laughs> for like this local thing and then the next day like we're at the orpheum theater for a sold out show with diana ross and yeah. it's like this is like you don't get much higher than that in terms of like musical like legend you know so yeah i mean yeah. 
Uh, it's what I learned. Um, one was um, the emphasis on artist hospitality and how that's been lost. Interesting. Um, you know, there's like a lot of kind of like, it's become kind of a little bit corporate and like not like a lot of attention to detail and like the way you care for an artist. They send you, you know, their writer, right. which is like in their contract, like the list of like the things they want in their green room and stuff. The, the no brown M&Ms thing. Right, right, right. The no right. brown M&Ms, <laughs> yeah. right. So, so sometimes, you know, the artists show up and they expect these things and then they'll get there and they like won't be there or they'll be kind of like there, but just like kind of thrown out there. Mm -hmm. So one thing that Rick really taught me is like, uh, going the extra mile to show that you actually care about the needs of the performer that when you know when they do your show you don't want them to come in and feel like it's another day and they're just like grinding out this tour you want it to feel like special yeah. like someone cared and that, like, that makes like that means their bands in a good mood the crews in a good mood when when like so it all comes together you yeah. know it all it really is a worthwhile investment to you know go the extra mile for the artist that's great you know you didn't have a background though in in artist promotion you came from a completely different experience as you alluded to earlier right homeschooling let's let's walk through that that premise in santa rosa sure uh, homeschool in the 90s i'd imagine uh yeah so you know i was yeah i was born in 88 and um, my parents are um they're both christians like so yeah. they're they're fairly conservative religious people and uh yeah they raised me and my two siblings on a farm and um, and we were homeschooled our entire way through, like all the way through high school. Oh wow! And um, and you know we're like highly involved in the church, and so yeah, like so my my upbringing was extremely conservative, extremely insulated. I had no idea. I mean, I wasn't like really allowed to listen to rock and roll music. It was like that type of thing growing up. I had to yeah. like sneak around to listen to 101.7 The Fox, right, you know, right. like that was like foreboden. <laughs> so like, so yeah, like, no, it wasn't like, I wasn't like born into like an artsy family where like it was natural for me to now be in this position. Yeah. And so when you started, well, when you, I guess, emancipated yourself a little bit culturally, at least uh, from that experience, how did you find yourself and how did you put yourself together in this in this new context of, of, of obvious you know, personal freedom and that kind of thing? Yeah, well, you know, it's it's funny because like to grow up in Santa Rosa, but then kind of like go, get out of the farm and then like experience culture shock within your own town and yeah. see like, I, I think a pivotal point was like recognizing that there were local venues where local bands played and that there was some like, albeit small, uh -huh. there was some semblance of like a local art scene. And I think the first time I went to a show like at the Arlene Francis Center was uh -huh. kind of like this like, whoa, like there's all this. Um, were you still living at the farm or how did you like, yeah, were you yeah. sneaking out to like participate and stuff or? I wasn't like sneaking out. I mean, <laughs> at that point, like it, it basically the turning point came around when I was like 18 or 19. I, I started like becoming aware of like local shows and local bands. I started a band with my brother nice. and um, I didn't understand how you got booked because everyone like went to high school together. So they like book each other's bands. Right, right. But I wasn't friends with anyone. Like I'm like coming out into this like don't know anyone. So so I just started cold calling like bars and coffee shops and saying like, hey, I have a band and I want to put on a show. And you know when one of those people like you know they don't know who I am but they don't care. They're like sure you know. <laughs> and that was like really the beginning was just like my first show ever was at like a dive bar. Nice. Um, and it was a way for me to showcase my own music. And then when the band broke up and you know now my brother's a missionary. Um, oh, interesting. So you guys had sort of divergent paths, it seems, in some ways. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We were talking to, like, this this, this um, old lady uh, was kind of randomly talking to us the other day and said, like, so what do you guys do? And I was like, well, I'm like a cabaret. I, like, produce a burlesque show. And my brother's like, I'm a Christian missionary. And it was, like, really <laughs> funny brother contrast. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, but um, so when the band broke up, um, I had been booking my own shows and kind of meeting people who were in other like little local bands and they would continue to ask me like, well, can you help me put on a show? So it was never like my dream to become a promoter or a booker at all. But like when the band dissolved and people said like, well, those shows you threw were cool. I kept kind of just brokering deals between venues and other local bands. Mm -hmm. And then it sort of expanded into me kind of like developing my own sense of like, okay, what kind of bands do I want to work with? What kind of artists do I want to work with? And then, um, and then I think the, the real like tipping point to like, that got me like more to where I am now was, um, I went to a variety show in Oakland called Tourette's without regrets. That's great. <laughs> which, um, yeah, it's a monthly variety show that's been going on for 15 years. So it's like yeah. an institution in the East Bay. Yeah. And, um, and you know, so I saw like 
it was the first time I ever saw a burlesque performance. And it was like this hyper political, like really like avant-garde performance. So my exposure to burlesque was not just like, yay, like glamour and, you know, right, shimmery. Right. It was like, people are like... It meant something. It was... Yeah, yeah. Like it was like a big deal. And then to see like, and then you see like accomplished slam poets from all over the Bay Area and you see fire performers and, you know, so the whole thing was just so much spectacle and then so much... You got exposed to so much different elements of like culture in one night, and it it felt like very non frivolous. It felt like this is like a communication medium. Like this is um, people like are finding like a sense of community through this type of show. And I really just wanted to do something like that in Santa Rosa, like something yeah. where it would be um, really eclectic, really inclusive of all walks of life, all types of performers. And that, um, yeah, so that and, was... And it's live. Everything is live. Everything is live, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know you've done screenings and stuff like that on occasion, but but it yeah. seems like you have an emphasis now on live performance. Live performance, live entertainment, yeah. What yeah. is it about live performance? Is it the vitality of the moment? What, what, what about it makes you want to do it? Um, I, I, just live performance, I mean, for one, like, you, there's so many angles to look at it from, but, like, from the, from the perspective of the artist, like, it's really interesting to see how it's not all about just, like, ego or, like, being cool and, like, I'm a performer. A lot of it, like, there's, like, really, like, a personal catharsis, if I may, like, yeah. that people experience, especially with burlesque, because, you know, sometimes people have this, this kind of connotation with that specific, specifically that it's, um, just kind of like risque and maybe like a little low brow and it's like mm -hmm. all about like ogling at women or, or something. Stuff. Yeah. 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 Which, you know, and which by the way, it's like, if you go to see that kind of show and you enjoy it, there's nothing wrong with that. Really? But yeah. I think, yeah. but I think the misunderstanding is that the actual burlesque community and scene is like a lot more uh, in depth than that. It, and, it, and it touches on people's body image mm -hmm. and um, their own like sexuality and like their gender expression. Like people are, you know, the, the the stage creates the space for people to really experiment with like who they are and how they feel about themselves, you know? And it's not just the performer too. There's a conversation that's occurring with the audience where the audience can see themselves reflected in the performer. So let's come back to this in a second. It's sure. 7.07, we're with Jake Ward. We'll be right back. Cool. We're back on 707 with Jake Ward. We're talking uh, right now about uh, the uh, cathartic aspect of burlesque performance and how it's a communication between the audience and the performer. And so uh, we left off talking about where the, oftentimes the audience sees themselves an expression that's a possibility for themselves yeah. that they wouldn't necessarily have access to otherwise. Yeah. That's big stuff, man. And providing that, is that cathartic to you? Well, it's, you know, it's, it's super meaningful because I think that when you, like when a, when, when a couple hundred people come together and they have a really great time and if the performers feel like they were able to express themselves and they like had like a really safe, like comfortable zone where they could just really be themselves and do their thing, like that's really rewarding because that's yeah. meaningful for them. And then for the audience, they come and they can be so inspired by the whole thing or maybe just like one thing really hits them and but there's basically not a show that goes by that someone won't approach you and be like, I want to do this. Right. And then we have within our community people who do different workshops, like introductory burlesque and stuff like that. So we're creating this sort of infrastructure where you can go from seeing burlesque for the first time in your hometown to taking a class in your hometown to having a stage, you know. And so that whole process has happened before. That's, that's amazing. You know? And so and, and you're, you're maintaining a tradition at that point, too. Yeah, I mean, we've been going for over two years now, so it starts to feel like, wow, like we're kind of like becoming, you know, we are what we are, but it's like a, it's like a yeah. little mi mini institution for people who are into this kind of thing. Uh, I mean, what's is there like a long term vision? Like, are we going to become Beach Blanket Babylon someday, or, or I mean, where where do you want to take it, or do you I, need to take it? Anyway? I want to I want it to keep going. I want it to keep growing. You know, I think that um, I'd like to see the show kind of grow with the scene and like help push the scene to grow even further. Mm -hmm. um, what I'd really like to see is just, you know, more people, like I, a lot of people just aren't aware of these shows even happening in Sonoma County. So that's a big step is like just getting it out there so we can increase our audience. How do you feel about the local press? Do they, do they give you enough, uh coverage? Um, you know, the local press, yeah, I reached out to local press. Um, the Bohemian actually has been tremendous about yeah. covering our events. They cover a lot of them. Um, 
Uh, I and I do radio. I like often like Steve Jackson, The Drive. Yeah. I go on there every single month now to just talk about the latest theme we're doing and the latest show. And so and then KRCB with Brian Griffin. I go on there sometimes. So I, I feel like the local press has like slowly become aware and they've been yeah. like very gracious. Yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, you're improving the city. You know, well, speaking of the city, do you have any support from any of the sort of local institutions like uh, Creative Cinema, for example, or, or even the city itself? No, not at all. But like, to be fair, I haven't really pursued yeah. those things. And I've also, um, you know, I, I, I would love that. I would love yeah. to see that because especially now it's like we went from a show that was on a Thursday night and it was 10 bucks and it was like all local performers. Now we're a Friday night, you know, we're like a weekend yeah. event. We, we were $15 now and we get international acts. And I think that like as the show has grown, we've seen the, the network of people who come grow. Because I watch the ticket sales and I can tell people from Oakland and Fairmont and Ukiah and wherever are buying tickets and coming just to our little monthly show. So it's like, yeah, in the future as part of like the tourism uh, um, goals of Sonoma County, I would love to be tied in with that. Yeah. Um, but part of that is educating the public because, you know, there is a lot of stigma around burlesque. Our show is super R-rated. So sometimes I feel like Sonoma County's uh, artistic presentation can be like a little vanilla and we're like a little, maybe just a little <laughs> outside of what they'd want to fund and really like put like, say like, hey, we endorse this. Um, but I think that over time, it could change. I mean, I wouldn't say that's a liability. I, I, it's a differentiator, right? Mm -hmm. It's a different kind of entertainment, and you've you've increased the the availability of of a wider spectrum of entertainment. But do you feel like Santa Rosa will ever embrace burlesque and the nature of the cabaret that you run? If it if it keeps growing, I think so because you know the bottom line is that the show is sustainable because people come to it. And right. I say that like almost every month. I'm like I'm. It's not like hey, thanks for being here. It's like. Thank you so much for coming because the only way this works is if you come. If you pay for a ticket, if you buy drinks at the bar and support them for supporting us and giving us a home. So there, there's this whole like open conversation about the sustainability and like the trajectory we're on. Like if we want this to keep building, like keep telling your friends. Like it's right. like a real, so there's that real conversation. And there. there's no shame in that transparency saying this, you have to actively keep this going. Yeah. Right. This is not a given. No, because like, yeah, we don't receive any support. This is like a bunch of crazy kids, you know? <laughs> right. But you guys aren't kids anymore, really. Well, no, no. Well, I, mean, I, I say kids. We're like in our 20s, like m yeah. most of the people behind it. But um, yeah, I mean, um, I would I would think that if the trend, if, if people stop coming into the show, like we'll stop doing it because that's just the nature of like, it won't be sustainable. It won't make sense. But if it keeps growing as it seems to be, then I think, yeah, at some point they'll recognize that like, hey, like, you know, I always think like a lot of people, when they think about what we're going to fund and put ourselves behind, like what's, you know, how, what, what's, what's happening on paper. Right. And, um, and we bring in good bar sales for the businesses. And, yeah, well, you know. tell, tell us who the bar is and kind of how that relationship began. So the bar is the Whiskey Tip, where we do right, our main right, show. Yeah. And uh, so they, when they opened, they were like this new thing, and they were just open to the idea. And it, and it also made sense because because they're outdoors, um, we can do fire performances. Right. And so we had to go through a process with the city, and like get a permit yeah. and all that good stuff, and you know safety number one, of course. But because they're outdoors, like they have that unique capability. So. Um, that's one of the reasons they've been a great home for us. And it sounds like it's a sy symbiotic relationship. Oh yeah, like yeah. they love it, they love it. I mean, you know, I don't think they have a lot of other like really like uh, consistent recurring events like yeah. us, so. But then we do it at other venues. We've done Ronit Park, we've done some stuff in Sebastopol, and I'd really like to get like get other little one-offs countywide. I would like to get into Marin and Napa. I'd like to talk to wineries like, Hey, we can cut. We could we could tailor something that's like really um, more classic if that's what you're into. Like we can do yeah whatever. And I know you guys are available for like private events, fundraisers, that kind of thing. Yeah, we do yeah. a lot of we you know we do a lot of now that now that like we feel more consistent in terms of like we know kind of about 200 people are going to come each month. We have like a little bit more flexibility to do fundraising. So you know we we developed a show that was a Bernie Sanders fundraiser. Right, right. It's called Burn Down for What, yeah. and it was like a completely like something we created that was an election themed variety show. So you guys can create themes for clients. We can create, yeah, yeah. totally, totally. We, we don't really, and I haven't, un unfortunately, like I haven't done a lot of that kind of outreach to see like who'd be interested in that kind of thing. So we're still kind of like building our own thing right now, but yeah, we can do that kind of thing. I'd say you're onto something. And where do we find you online and all that? 
Um, uh, social media mainly, like we're still, yeah. like we have NorthBayCabaret.com does exist. It's kind of still under construction, but yeah, Facebook, yeah. we're on there. So if you look up Jake Ward presents, like that's kind of my umbrella for like all the other events I do. Yeah. Cause I also work with a local family friendly project. That's a circus troupe. And then I do like still like rock shows and stuff. So like, that's the umbrella, like look up Jake Ward presents and then North Bay Cabaret. Nice. And yeah. 20 years from now. What does it look like? Do we go into your palatial office and I have to wait in the lobby to see, see Jake and then finally... 20 years from now? Yeah. I, what I would love to accomplish, at, whether I'm at the forefront of it or just like a support for it, is having a new performance space in Santa Rosa that's accessible to local bands but can also um, bring in touring acts. And like, we just have like this need for a space in Santa Rosa. So like that's one of my big goals. So would you run this space? Is that kind of the vision? That, that's the thing. Like, I don't need it to have like my fingerprints all over it. It doesn't have to be, like, to be called my the thing. ward. No, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I just <laughs> yeah. want to see it happen. So, like, whether yeah, I would, you know, I could like as a career, yes, I would love to like manage a local venue where you know, from like your teenage punk band to your like touring act that's going to bring in a different demographic. It's just like we just just something that we're like. We but, have, but like in a, Santa Rosa, like specifically in Santa Rosa, you could probably call the Phoenix in Petaluma right now and get the job. <laughs> but, Phoenix is doing great work. Yeah. I love all of the venues in Sonoma County and like the, how they like cater to their different communities and they have their different niche. But I think that we need just like a premier Santa Rosa venue, like something like you got the Smart Train coming in. Right. I I totally pay attention to like real estate development <laughs> and like all the plans that are happening. And it's like if someone plopped a venue that could fit like a 300 person club, but like ideally even something like in the 600 person range, yeah. it'd be a, like a game changer, That's you know? Awesome. So. Great insights, man. Jake Ward uh, from Jake Ward Presents. Find him online. You've been watching 707. Thanks, man. Come back. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. it's a good one.